You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. And I'm Carolyn Nelson. And that last hour is going to be a hard one to follow, folks. Say, did you hear the one about Hillary? She wanted this dude killed, so she hired these three Israelis who dressed up like Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, and Michael Jackson, and the Secret Service just waved them right on in the gate into the White House. Never mind that the Secret Service don't guard the gate, it's the White House police. Of course, nobody escorted them into the White House. They didn't have any security passes. Nobody checked their credentials. No, just waved them right on in. And these three Israelis, all decked out in all this makeup and stuff, looking like Tammy Faye Baker, just walked right in and shot this dude named Foster, and he just dropped dead right there on the ground floor of the White House, and nobody heard anything. Nobody knew nothing. This happened early in the morning, and then not till 1 o'clock, they found this guy sitting at his desk dead. Yep. And Clinton, he just had a fit, you know. He just flew right off the handle and had the Secret Service order them to take this dude out, this dead body, ferried him out to this park, this strange park that nobody knows about, you see, and propped him up there until somebody found him. And he had a he had a trigger print on his thumb that just wouldn't go away. <laughs> Folks, Hillary Rodham Clinton didn't get to the White House by being so absolutely stupid. You see, you're the sheeple, not her. You see, if she was the sheeple, she'd be sitting in your living room and you'd be in the White House. <laughs> Don't you guys understand that? Welcome to the last episode of Mystery Babylon. Nazi Germany, a state in which children have become a national obsession. Hitler has proclaimed it must be considered reprehensible to withhold healthy children from the nation. If the fertility of the healthiest bearers of the nationality is consciously and systematically promoted, the result will be a race which has eliminated the germs of our present physical and hence spiritual decay. In the doctrines of National Socialism, this spiritual decay has but one cause, the dilution of the Aryan race by the blood of inferior peoples. Only by breeding from the racially purest can the greatness of the Aryans be restored. In the vanguard of the Nazi racial mission is Hitler's Praetorian Guard, the SS. Before he can enter the SS elite, the candidate must have his German ancestry proved back to the year 1750. Before marriage, the prospective bride of an SS man is subject to rigorous racial investigation. From the offspring of Hitler's guard, many generations in the future is intended to come the racially purest of German stock. A superior breed of human, born to rule. origins of this terrifying vision are strange and contradictory, an unlikely union between the teachings of a modern scientific movement and the esoteric doctrines of the occult.
By the late 1920s, the German scientific and medical world had wholeheartedly embraced a new movement, the science of eugenics. The founder of eugenics is an Englishman, Sir Francis Galton, the cousin of Charles Darwin. The aim of eugenics, Galton had written, is to breed out feeble constitutions and petty and ignoble instincts, and to breed in those which are vigorous, noble, and social. To the disciples of eugenics, the intelligent and the industrious, the mentally ill, the criminal, and the alcoholic are so because they carry within them the traits of their parents. The theory is that inferior types, by breeding faster than those of more valuable stock, will produce a catastrophic decline in the quality of the human race. Only by the most drastic measures, it is believed, can disaster be averted. The solution favored by the eugenics movement is the legal control of human breeding. Laws must be passed for the compulsory sterilization of the feeble-minded, the alcoholic, the insane, and the pauper. At the same time, valuable members of society are to be encouraged to have the largest possible number of children. In the 1920s, while eugenics in Europe is still in the realms of scientific theory, in the United States of America, it has long since been put into practice. The state of North Dakota had banned marriage for alcoholics, the insane, and those suffering from tuberculosis as early as the turn of the century. In 1907, the state of Indiana had passed the world's first law allowing sterilization of the mentally ill and criminally insane. By 1930, 28 American states have passed similar laws, and 15,000 people in mental hospitals and prisons have been compulsory sterilized. By 1939, the figure will have reached 30,000. The health office of the government of the German Weimar Republic makes a detailed study of American eugenic laws. It is deeply impressed by America's sterilization campaign, and leading German eugenicists praise U.S. restrictions on the immigration of foreigners and the laws passed in some southern states banning intermarriage between the races. There is a growing concern in German medical circles that Germany is being left behind in the struggle for racial improvement. By 1927, eugenics, now with the new name racial hygiene, is rapidly gaining respectability in Germany. More and more university medical faculties offer courses in the subject. An institute specializing in racial hygiene is founded by the German Health Office. The task of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute is to study means of halting what an influential report had called the physical and mental degeneration of the German people. Racial hygiene has also become a central pillar in the strange ideology of a rising political party. spent much of the year 1924 in prison for his part in an attempted coup against the Bavarian government. While in prison, he'd read a recently published and widely praised textbook on human heredity and racial hygiene. He'd also written his political testament, Mein Kampf. In Mein Kampf, Hitler's commitment to the doctrines of racial hygiene is made clear. 
the state he 